We're going to start by making a lot of background papers. We probably will not use hardly any of them, but that means we will have a stockpile for future projects. I've got here some, I think this is watercolour paper. It doesn't really matter what you use. I do have a gel plate, you don't have to use one. I've got a brayer, you can use a brush instead. And I've got some acrylic paints. I bought a very cheap brand off Amazon, probably Chinese, and just bought the one that had the biggest range of colours that was getting reasonable reviews. All I'm going to do is try and squeeze a bit onto here, roll it over this bit, and do some printing by adding the paper, pressing, you can roll if you want, pulling it up, and you can see you get different effects there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take some white, Ooh, didn't mean to roll as much as that. So I'm going to use my paintbrush to get put that to one side. Roll that on bits and pieces of it. Print that on there. So we start to get some different effects. I don't want patterning, I'll just smooth that out a bit. Get a brayer over it. I'm going to take some grey. You can see we're starting to get different colours, different effects. Sometimes we will stay within the same colour range. For example, we'll stay within all the greens. And for this one, I just wanted to see a bit of mixing going on. And we can try different things like using brushes. This is a turquoisey colour. Okay, let's try another piece. This is just playing, so it's actually in that sense quite good fun this one's got a bit of water in it let's get that down with this turquoise on let's try this with a new piece nice i'm gonna leave that to be as it is to so put some white down some gray it's more gray than i intended but it's okay a bit of this turquoise pole bolt and we're just gonna roll everything together all i'm making is some background papers a bit of white what did i have too much of there gray last time some gray left over throw those together oh that one's quite nice spread that about olive green so i am going to move my way through a lot of these colors let's mix that with the turquoise and some grey. This time maybe with a brush. Put that one on and this time we'll go over the top of it. See what we get this time. We've got one that looks far more like it's got brush marks in it. Got a different sort of grey. A previous grey. Right. Nice. Stick some this down because it's spare on my brush. You see it's there's no method in what I'm doing in that sense. Let's roll that over. I'm going to use this on a landscape set in the UK. So if I'm going more towards the dark colours at the moment, that's why. I love those colours there. I've got here some copy paper, the cheapest of the cheap paper. It's already grabbing up some paint, which is fine. I'll take that up. That's actually quite nice, so we might keep that. You don't have to use special art papers you can just use copy paper i'm gonna go back to the greys again i know i'm doing a lot of gray i will do some more colors it's just like i say with it being something for the uk so that's the pale gray the white just grab some of that off just build up a big stock now i'm quite preferring this copy paper to the proper watercolor paper I'm going to work my way through a lot of colours because I want a lot of backgrounds. This is something you can do for 10 minutes, half an hour, not think about it, just relax. doesn't really matter because we're going to be tearing these papers up. So final works of art are not required. I'm going to throw some burgundy with that and probably some white. And as usual, I've probably got too much, so I'm going to wax some up interesting let's just take everything that's already on there stripey let's hit up some yellows so oh actually i've got a metallic gold why not 
Oh, nice. And it's got a nice metallic sheen to it. I don't know, you might have a use for that. I'm going to keep playing through all my different colour ranges. So pinks, reds, greens, blues, beiges, stone colours and greys. I'm probably going to end up sticking with using the copy paper over the mixed media paper, but that's personal choice. You don't have to have a gel paint. You don't even have to have acrylic paint. You can have watercolour, watercolour crayons. You can have distress inks. For example, I've got a tray here some water here. I've got my original acrylic paints, a biggish brush, water. We're just going to grab some bits and start to paint backgrounds on. We're going to pick up the paint. Any blending is actually going to be done on the paper. Then we could get a different brush, paint one of the colours, do some splattering. Once you've painted up plenty of background sheets in different colours and I've actually done this on the watercolour paper, copy paper, junk mail envelopes, spare cream paper. You can also then look at scraps from any projects that you've been doing, old magazines, because that's going to give you a variety of textures within the collage. I have this small secondhand picture that I got from a charity shop, thrift store, probably costs about 50 pence. And what I'm going to do is use this for the collage. It already has a frame. And now you can see that this original piece was something someone made and added. And here is the backing. This we can keep for a junk journal. This will be what we use. Although this is not strictly necessary, I am going to give it a layer of. Often I will do processes that are not necessary and that's because of how I like to view things rather than you have to do them. It helps me having a paler background. This is the picture that I'm going to use as my reference. This is Whitby close to where I grew up and as you can see this is the view from one side of the little harbour to the other they both rise steeply and on cliffs and there are steps up here 199 of them up to the abbey ruins which is part of the Dracula story when I use this as a reference, I will not necessarily be putting in every single building or even the abbey and these top buildings. I might put in these uh, farm style buildings at the top, but then just level it off and go into the sky. You don't want to overcrowd the collage. So some of these houses we put in the harbour area and one or two boats maximum. I'm going to very lightly break this down so that we have it broken into thirds. The top third is the skyline. The middle third includes this steep hill and the buildings, the biggest bit. And then the bottom is going to be the water and the boats. For this next stage, all I've got is a couple of pair of scissors and a glue stick and obviously all my paper backgrounds. And what I'm going to try and do is mimic, not precisely, obviously, some of the colours that are going on and the shapes in here through tearing up and also cutting bits of paper. I don't want mine to be as dark as this but I do want to find some interesting colours that are going to look kind of cool together to form that water. So bits with white in it, bits that are more solid. I'll do a mixture of pairing and cutting so that again, we get different textures and a different look to this. We are not doing obviously a realistic in proportion collage we're going to do something that's more childlike and more fun because that's the idea we're not going to sweat over this and we're not even going to worry too much about sizes of pieces we're going to 
fill in this little shape that I've drawn these two colors together like I say this is just almost a reference point for shapes rather than anything else maybe a bit of shadowing but that's about it taking the glue stick I'm not gonna put this down heavily just a small actually there's a very dark area along here where the wall starts which would be kind of cool to replicate what you can do is once you've got pieces down you can go back and glue stronger if you like this is a temporary bit of gluing I want the darker edge really at the top because that's kind of what happens with that wall and that's all I'm looking at is where is it darker where is it lighter if you wanted to you could do this in completely modern funky colors you do not have to do landscapey colors you could do the hills blue the houses pinks the sea I don't know purples whatever you want but with that piece I will fill that bit in I can put a torn piece across that bottom bit have some lighter area here and then that lightness comes over this way notice I'm not worrying about the way the brush strokes go I want something reasonably dark along that top bit so go to another piece of paper where it's darker there's a mixture of torn and cut edges What I've been finding is using my reference photograph it's easier for me to build these houses up and all these little shapes because all the houses face different ways off the main collage and then add it later for example that one would go there but we're going to end up putting a bit of green in here to represent tops of trees and we'll build this way and this way taking into account some of these lighter bits if we can without getting too detailed on that being a big key area when we get into trying to create some green behind houses i've got a lighter piece and a darker piece and i'm cutting very small amounts of green to represent treetops looking at the picture for where the shade is or the darkness is using small amounts of glue now if you're happy where things are you can stick them down as well at the same time a darker bit on here I'm starting to with some of the bits that I know are going to stay push them down with a bone folder continuing to build up these houses i'm going to do i've got one of the lighter ones in maybe another lighter one sitting slightly back from it and try and create some of these angles that you've got here and just see how we get on this is where i've got to so far as you can see no abbey no church no farm buildings what's next to do because we've done the large shapes is to add some detail using smaller shapes so a couple of yachts there's some railings here i don't have my tweezers my son borrowed them for his art exam it's going to make it very hard to pick up small pieces i do object to using a pure white i've kind of used one here but i painted a square out used one here but painted over some blue so therefore I thought maybe cream for the yachts I may even vaguely draw the yacht shape it's just to get an impression obviously so it goes like that proportionally it's probably wrong should be a bit bigger by the look of it so let's do that hoping we've now got a size that works and then the idea I was thinking of was to tuck 
one piece behind the other and glue them together when that's dry i will cut off any excess that doesn't quite work with the shape if i feel i need to these railings are actually blue but i'm not sure that i want to do them blue because i i've got a lot of greys already i'm not going to attempt to get angles on stairs right that would be way beyond my perspective abilities all i'm going to do is try to cut some very very thin strips and give myself a bit of a nightmare trying to make some railings I want to put the railing the long piece on when that's secure so not going to move trim off that end let's just take the steps this way you can see here that this is now not where it should be so i'm going to take some of that off won't come off that easily it will leave marks get a tiny piece doesn't matter if it matches or not although it would be better if i could find the matching one i'm not going to worry too much that it doesn't fully match because light shade no one's going to know where the light was falling right i need my skinny bits again because now we're going to go this way draw these in if you want to using a white gel pen but I thought it'd be more fun to challenge the collaging I know that that is going to need a second one it's fiddly but eventually you will get some kind of fencing effect once you've got as far as you're going to go with bits of paper we're going to take a matte medium and go over the whole thing this will help seal it down but also if we do any pen markings for windows doors that type of thing it means it won't smudge about too much for finishing touches i've got a 0 0.3 black waterproof archival ink liner a white paint pen and a couple of brown art marker pens which have fine and brush style i am simply going to start to fill in bits and pieces that i think will add to the feel of it looking at some of the shaded areas and bringing in some of that shade i'm going to smudge but i don't want anything too strong this sits back from this one so we're going to take a bit of shading again go under that roof line having a look at further back so we have a dark area here we have a roof line Adding some windows, adding a bit of shading. We're going to get the impression of what this is supposed to be. Therefore, I've added shading, for example, along pavement edges, under roofs, on sides of buildings, even on the harbour wall. Added shading on certain angles to try and make it look like a harbour wall. Wherever there's an object, I've shaded below it to try to this one maybe not so much try to give it that three-dimensional look you can just keep going and adding bits of shading to create your shapes and style that you're interested in as a pavement edge for example and just follow that through that's a dark corner because this one is sitting forward so you fill that in a bit darker and graduate it by smudging out smudging out so that's how i've done my little bits of shading going in adding shade layering it up smaller and smaller so that it graduates i've also added shade around all these banisters so they're less white i've created hopefully some curvature to this harbour wall by using 
shading on the angles of where it's curving round. Made the steps a little bit two tone, so same here, so that it gives an impression of something. I'm not very good at angles, so I'm not sure whether it gives an impression of steps or not. Here I could probably do with just going along the base of these. Remembering you're going to see this from a distance, so can be very sketchy. That's more or less what I've been doing. Got some sun on roofs that I'm not really loving, so we're gonna go over that. Just touching up basically. Anything that I've done that I'm not overly keen on and then by doing that we're getting a bit of a blended effect. Really, really simple stuff there. The only thing I don't like is this house up here because I feel like it's too big in comparison to the others. Therefore, I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to create a hill. That's now in place. I would like to use a bit of green along this hill edge. You can hopefully darken that down and create the bank and bring it up into the rest. Creates that feeling of height. It will come down a bit. Okay. Yeah, not too bad at all. Finishing touches. I think I will just very lightly with a sanding block go around the edge. I do have this vintage photo kind of distress ink on here and I want to see if I go around that edge kind of vintage it up a bit frame it a little bit try that in the frame oh that's kind of cool isn't it yeah you've got a bit of staining around the edge you can't see it on all the edges I think it's cute we do have a lot of backgrounds pop them in a folder a big file could you use them again for other projects back make things for junk journals I might try doing some funky birds, something completely different, more modern looking. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will catch you very, very soon. Bye.